Hello, everyone. Welcome. We are Poll on the Call. My name is Mandy Mack. And I am Chris Rivers. <laughs> and today we are episode 24. And yes. with us today, we have the amazing Fifi Bamboo. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Poll on the Call, Fifi. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, so excited for you to be here. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time to to meet with us today and talk about your poll journey and all of that. Yeah. My pleasure. <laughs> so, um, when did when did you start getting interested in poll? Um, so the first time I touched a poll was uh, the summer after my sophomore year of college. Um, a friend of mine, we were in Manhattan, and she saw like an ad to take a class, and like she wrangled like a group of like six of us. Uh, and it was like a six week series or something. Um, and I remember the instructor being really mean. Um, <laughs> and uh, I ended up being the only one that kind of kept doing the thing. Um, and then uh, I decided to buy a poll and I had it up in my dorm room. Uh, so we had like all the ladies nights in college for my junior and senior year. Uh, and then I graduated from college and I wanted to try to run uh, my first half marathon and I injured my knee and then I was like, okay, well, I need something else to obsess over. So I started taking pole classes again and uh, I haven't looked back since. Um, so yeah, that's the start of the journey. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, it's really yeah, funny yeah. though, because I was like, oh, I injured my knee. I need something that's like not a contact sport. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Let me just like, smash yeah. myself into the pole. I know. Like, me back. I can't imagine like knee hooks and stuff. That must have been awful. Yeah. No. It's like a completely different kind of content. But. <laughs> yes. Excellent. So you you that's fun that they, like, they let you have the pole in the dorm room. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, I had like the tension one. Um, hmm. But yeah, could nobody tell me nothing. <laughs> it, was it was a 50 because that's uh, the size that I started on as well. Um, and yeah, I have like photos of me and my girlfriends, you know, like really bad photos. <laughs> like, I think they were like, they may have been taken on like the wind up oh my camera. God. <laughs> like, action shots where like you can like barely see somebody's face. But yeah, I have a couple good ones. I love That's it. awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Let's and where be, where was that? And <laughs> where did mm -hmm. you go to, to college? I went to Yale. Ah, okay. Yeah. And what did yeah. and oh. maybe ask? What did you study? Uh, I studied political science. Yeah, uh, I don't really cool. like politics, <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> um, but I'm an immigrant, so I got into Yale, so I had to go to Yale because. You know, we do what we must. Uh, so, yeah, but one of my first photo is like the Yale banner in like my dorm room in the background. <laughs> pole dancing. I'm like, this, yeah. is, this is for the ages. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. Yeah, there wasn't maybe the, there wasn't any pole studios down in New Haven around around that time, maybe. I don't think so, but like I was yeah. broke, so like I couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> whatever um, <laughs> For sure. did anything seriously on the pole while I had it in my bedroom it really was just like oh let's go to let's go to her room <laughs> like <laughs> drink some Mike's hard lemonade <laughs> like, <laughs> got it <laughs> the good old days <laughs> now it's work <laughs> yeah Still basically know, breaking awesome. my hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So what made you start uh, teaching? Because you teach now. And you um, co-own a studio too. Oh man. Um, <laughs> I, don't know, I feel like I've always just like been uh, somebody who teaches people. Like I feel like I was always like a tutor in some capacity and um, always just kind of helping teach people. My mom, um, she's retired now, but she used to be a teacher and like, uh, she would take me to like top, take her child to work day. And like, you know, so like, there's always been like a teacher part of me. Um, 
and I felt, and this was years ago, and as much as I can remember, it just kind of felt like, well, what's what's the next step in this thing, this hobby that I take way too seriously? Um, and I wasn't ready to compete yet. I, I don't think I'd even performed in a student showcase, and this was like three, four years in, because um, I still didn't have an invert, which we can talk about later in that whole journey. Um, but I was like, yeah, I think I want to just start helping other people. And I feel like by that point, I'd had to work so hard because I didn't come from like a gymnastics background or like a ballet background that like, I'd had to take so many classes to like learn my basics that I feel like I'd collected like so many things that I could even see as a fellow student that I could like help other people um, kind of tackle a movement or a skill. Um, and it just kind of felt like the next thing that I wanted to do in my hobby to, to try to help other people. Um, and it's been like in more recent years where it's like, th this is how I contribute to like humanity. Um, and it's only just pole dancing, <laughs> but you know, it's that joy when like somebody tackles a move and like what that means for them sometimes, like, especially when it's like a really long-term skill that they've been working on or, or even just like watching somebody develop just like excitement about how strong they are and like their confidence and like their physical strength and like them being surprised by themselves. It just has become this thing where it's like, this is this is how I help the world. Uh, and again, it's, it's only pole dancing. I'm not solving cancer, or like helping anybody with like serious problems. Um, but just to like see people on that journey and to like be there for those moments. And like, sometimes I get teary eyed and uh, yeah, it's just, it's great being a teacher. I'm a pole grandma now, which is awesome. <laughs> oh my that goodness. is awesome. I will say though, it is, I don't think it's just pole dancing. I think you're definitely helping people more than you realize. Um, I feel a lot of pole dance students have a lot of sexual trauma and pole dancing helps with their mental health and helps them get through it and you might not realize it but i'm sure yeah. you're helping your students way more than just maybe so maybe so <laughs> yeah. my my fiance is like a social worker and like deals with like real problems so like sometimes i come home and i'm like da, 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 and it's like okay the scale of the things that i'm doing compared to like social work uh so yeah sometimes i do tend to like uh tone it down a little bit just because i feel like but yes, yes, there are some people you just never know, you know, what they're, what they're looking to solve with pole. Um, you just you're don't know. People yeah, yeah. 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 You definitely change your lives for sure. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so true, though, like, yeah, we shouldn't like belittle our, what we're doing, because it is like, it to other people maybe who don't understand it is like <laughs> ah, pole dancing <laughs> yeah. but to people who come through the door and like you can see like their confidence change and everything it is like it's really life-changing and yeah, yeah it is yeah. it's a thing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my gosh well there was something that you said that that really resonated with me um when when you were talking about how like um you couldn't teach the the ballerina because it came really quickly to you and and i was like oh yeah like if the tricks come really quickly to you like you don't know the ins and outs of them and you mm -hmm. were talking about how like it took so long for you to get your invert um <laughs> do you want to talk about um uh, maybe like that process because that that's something for a lot of students that they just can't get their invert and they don't understand like how um yeah, yeah navigate that yeah um i feel like i tell my students now like unfortunately you know we kind of make it kind of just feel sometimes or felt like to me like inverts was the difference between the haves and the have nots and i feel like that's just the thing where like people leave because it's like okay like this is this is really hard unless like again you you are skilled in uh activating your lower core and like your pelvic tilt, which is like, took me months to even try to understand what muscles you're talking about that you want me to move. Um, it just sometimes feels like we hinge so much about your future and pull around inverts. And uh, I'm trying to like move away from that as much as possible because I feel like in my journey, I was doing like chopsticks 
before I could invert. And like chopsticks is a little bit harder. It's a little bit of a harder move. And I feel like I was really finding success and accessibility in a lot of upright moves that didn't require that I go upside down. And I think it's important for me as an instructor to like remind people like there are still a million other things that you can do before you have your invert slash you can get upside down in other ways. Let's talk about that. Like it doesn't have to always be that chopper to an outside leg hang. Um, and so it's, it's important for me because of my personal journey and how hard it was to like make sure that I like curate and really walk people through that experience and not let them feel like I'm less than because I can't invert, which is what I feel like I felt like. Um, but long story short, I, I have a very bendy back. And I think uh, because of that, I've always just kind of walked with my butt sticking out and like zero engagement in my abs. And so even just the concept of like trying to go the other way, like made no physical sense to my mind. I'm like, what do you want me to do? And I'm like, you want me to hide my butt? I'm sorry, I'm Hispanic. No, like my butt should be going this way at all times. I'm not trying to like hide it by scooping my tail under slash I don't even know what you mean. Um, but yeah, it just took me a really long time to understand. And um, and I think that was also, it was just like really physical. Like, I just didn't come from any sports background where like I had to use my core consciously. And it was just like a really big mental exercise to even just understand what I'm being asked to do. And I remember like, I had instructors like try to tell me like, you know, make believe you're a mountain troll. <laughs> and like, I, re I remember it was Shayna Cruea. She literally was like, like this. And I was like, oh, okay. That makes a lot of sense. And I feel like I just like started walking around like this all the time, like hiding my butt. But I was like, okay, like that really resonated with me. And then uh, I got a personal trainer at one point. So I was like, I need to figure this shit out. Like I do crunches and like my jaw hurts. I'm clearly not doing my crunches right. And he's like, okay, like make believe I'm going to punch you in the stomach. And I'm like, <gasps> and he's like, that's bracing. That's tilting your core. And it just like, it was such an exercise and even beginning to understand, which is I think where I started to really appreciate as an instructor, like, coming up with metaphors to explain people who don't come from a movement background, how to understand this thing that your body has literally never done before. Um, but yeah, like I, um, I used to take classes at Body and Pole when I first started dancing. And I remember uh, there was another student, we started at the same time uh, and then she got her invert and then like left level two. And I was like, I'm still here, this is trash. Um, and I remember like I, one day I started crying in Delijah's class, <laughs> uh, Delijah from Black Girls Poll, and she just like served up some really tough love. And she was like, you stop crying right now. <laughs> like, like, and it was like totally like in a mother, but like, you stop crying right now. Like, don't feel bad about this. Like, we're all on a different journey. Like, um, and she just kind of said like, it's okay. It's okay. Like, stop feeling bad about it. Um, and then I feel like that was when I started actually like gravitating towards corner poles because I realized like I was feeling bad because I would just like stand there and like watch everybody else. And that's when I decided I would always take a corner pole, which I still do to this day. And like, I would literally turn and give my back to the rest of the room. Like I would stare at, a, I would look at the wall and then like work on my shit. Like, I'm literally gonna stop looking at everybody else in the room. I'm gonna literally give them my back and I'm gonna work on my other shit. And I remember there was this one class where I'd already been doing this for a while and uh, I did something. And for the first time in my life, somebody was like, wow, Fifi, that was amazing. And I was like, like I was like upside down or something. And I was like, wait, what, me? Um, and that just kind of like became the moment where it's like, I really did suspend comparing myself to other people. I really just focused on my own thing, my own little corner, literally not looking at anybody else in the room. And I feel like that's really when like, I started to fly. Um, but yeah, that was like a lot of stuff. Um, but my inversions journey was an emotional one. It like literally like tears emotional. Um, and now I love teaching people how to invert. <laughs> um, 
also because I had to think about it for so long and find different ways to like make this accessible and fun for myself. So yeah, it's like one of my favorite things to teach people, even though it was like the biggest pain in my ass <laughs> to try to get. <laughs> but anyways, that's like my inversion shtick. So thank, thank you, you so much for sharing that. Yeah, no, th I think that everyone's, you know, for a lot of people, it's like that. Like some people start pull at the same time and then your friend will get everything else. And like, you'll be like, okay, great. I'm <laughs> still <Bye>. here. <laughs> Bye. Um, but yeah, like who but, knows how to like engage those deep inner core muscles and like, what are they? Mean, you know, what the, <laughs> where are they? Who are they? I don't understand. Um, <laughs> Oh, yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, I did when I when you coached me for that one little time, I did appreciate all of your wonderful analogies. They were so easy to understand. Like it was so <laughs> great. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It's been a it's it's taken it's taken a couple years to like find just the right ones. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate them. I hope to like experience, you know, a little bit more of them because they're just so brilliant. And especially for like people like you say who don't have a, a movement background. Like what the heck yeah. are we like talking about here? Yeah. But you know, like I could like when you were like, oh straight jacket, I'm like, okay. <laughs> I feel like out. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna bust out of the straight jacket. I understand that. <laughs> yeah. And it was perfect yeah. for the move that you were trying to teach me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, a lot of my students say that like I should, I should just have a book of like Fifiisms because uh, yes. <laughs> it's a lot of weird stuff I say in class, but like people, they get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And how many years have you been teaching? Uh, oh man, like six, six years or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. So awesome. Yeah, you definitely have a lot of <laughs> two two volumes full of these analogies. Yes. And I just keep surprising myself <laughs> with what I come up with. I'm like, what? sometimes I'm like, did I just say that? But it's working. Okay. <laughs> um, my new favorite one, like when I'm teaching a tulip is, um, I feel like students often, um, they bring their elbow to the front of the pole and then try to thread the arm through as opposed to thread it through and then go over. And I go scratch and sniff. <laughs> And like, I feel like nobody has messed it up since. <laughs> I haven't had to talk about it. It's been absolutely great, but uh, it really, uh, it, it worked. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> oh, God. So funny. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> it definitely keeps the, the pole class lighthearted and whimsical too, rather yeah. than being like really stressful. <laughs> Seriously. And like, I think that's so important as an instructor, especially like with beginning students. Um, like, this is hard. Um, yeah. This is really hard. <laughs> so like, I need you to like, come back. I need you to have fun. Yes. Uh, you know, at least like, you're gonna laugh while you're doing these like, 30 second hollow body holds. <laughs> it's like, let's joke around or something. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, so you didn't have any sort of movement background at all. Um, I um, I like to say that over generalization, but I feel like um, I like to tell people that everybody comes to pole with at least like one God given gift that you don't have to like work on. And I feel like my two, I have two. Uh, I have a really really bendy back, uh, and I have rhythm because uh, I grew up like salsa dancing and bachata and merengue like doing that stuff with like my family um so I never ever like had like formal count the music training uh or like straightening my leg and pointing my toe training um but I have rhythm uh so <laughs> I can at least like flow or something <laughs> but yeah no no I was I played like soccer and softball and badminton uh growing up <laughs> growing up geez um but yeah no like dance background at all oh. other than like family socials that's awesome and did, did you always know you were a bendy or did when you got to the pole you were like wow look at me 
yeah, like getting into like a, what is it called? Cart, cart, no, a back, what is it? A back bend? I don't know what it's called. I don't even, I, I don't even know what it's called. I can back bend. I've always been able to wheel. A wheel or a regular back bend? I mean, a back I don't bend know. is wheel, pretty much. And it's yoga is wheel, biggest. but it's just a back bend. <laughs> yeah, like it's biggest. So I don't even know what it's called. Um, anyways, we're like, my hands and my feet are on the floor, but I'm back bending. I've always been able to do that as a kid. So yeah. that was like a non-issue. Um, my middles are like, I've made this much progress in 10 years. What are middles? The, like, like if you press yourself forward against the wall and just like splat this way. Interesting, okay. Uh, Mandy, I think. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, okay, so you're like laying on the ground and then you're split and you push up against the wall. <laughs> Yeah, do like, like if it? I were like in the wall, I can't do that. <laughs> I've made no progress in 10 years. Okay. My body doesn't want to go that way. And I'm getting to a certain age where it's like, I'm going to stop forcing. <laughs> I'm going to stop forcing. <laughs> Not going to happen. <laughs> um, <Excuse me. laughs> look. <laughs> You're not at that certain age yet, also. <laughs> I feel like my 20s were when I was like, I'm going to try to really work on myself and like every day. And I feel like now that I'm in my 30s, I'm like, I'm just going to come to terms. Oh, that was my 30s. Right? Yeah. I can't wait to be in my 40s. Oh, my God. I'm going to give like fewer fucks. <laughs> <laughs> or as I like to say, I'm going to run a fuck deficit. <laughs> like, y'all owe me fucks. I'm sorry, is cursing allowed? Um, anyways, 40s are going to be amazing. Can't nobody tell me nothing. Yeah. Far cry. 40s are like the new 20s and 30s. <laughs> they really are. It's just funny, though, because like everything crackles and pops and <laughs> new pains every morning, but whatever. It's fine. Yeah. As we get older, right. we got to add more yoga. Yeah. I know. I'm like, wait, my warm ups need to be a little bit longer now. Yeah. And I actually need like, to cool down. Wake it up. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wait, hold on. I need five more minutes on this side. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, you, so you said that you competed and you only competed once mm -hmm. and you won. <laughs> I did and I'm done. Drop the money. You're done. <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, I'm really competitive, I'm really competitive. Um, and I'm very type A, which I think serves me well for like my Instagram videos. <laughs> um, and, uh, and when I say I'm type A, I mean, I don't really enjoy the journey. I'm just trying to get there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I was like, all right. Uh, I decided, okay, I might be curious about competing uh, and so I decided to be a pole kitten for PSO just so I can like just see. And then I saw and I was like, OK, I could do this because um, I feel like I'd convince myself that you can only compete if like you're professional. <laughs> and I was like, oh, wait, like <laughs> they're not all level fives, even though that's like the only thing I watch on YouTube. Like there's like level two. Oh, OK. <laughs> um, so I was like, all right, I'm signing up. It's November. This thing is in March. Between now and then, I'm gonna work on managing my expectations, stopping to smell the roses, enjoying the journey. And if I don't win, I will know I did all that I could. It's gonna be okay. I'm not gonna be upset. I'm not gonna say if I didn't win, this was a waste of time. I'm gonna be level-headed about this because this is a hobby. Let me let it go. Uh, and then I worked really hard. <laughs> And I ended up winning. So I was kind of like, oh, I didn't have to like really uh, work through. It's like I almost like secretly didn't want to win so that I could work through those feelings of like, no, this was like still a good use of my time. Like I perfected these moves that I've done a million times on only one side. Um, and, you know, I've gone through this experience. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was great. I won. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I'll, I will probably never do it again because it was really stressful. It was really stressful. <laughs> um, and uh, I think I just enjoy performing in like more casual spaces. And um, I love storytelling and like costumes. I feel like I have uh, 
America's Next Top Model to blame for that. Um, but I just love playing dress up and like doing a whole thing. Um, so yeah, I love student showcases, just like not literally being judged. <laughs> Don't want to be judged. I just want to have fun. I uh, performed recently and like I did some move that moved my underwear over a little bit. I picked my wedgie <laughs> on stage. I'm like, this is just, this is fun. This is not a big deal. It was a freestyle. And uh, yeah, so I just really enjoy those casual spaces where I'm literally just like laughing on stage with the crowd. <laughs> so, yeah. That is too funny. In a competition, you would have been not from picking the wedgie. I know. Look, <laughs> if you think of the Titanic, and when I say wedgie, I mean like I had to move the thing like back over <laughs> sideways. <laughs> I was like in like a little bit of like a teddy hole facing the audience and like I fixed it. I love it. You're right, showcases are so much better. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh my God, I did pick a wedgie on stage at PSO and I definitely got the Titan <laughs> Right, maybe I should just switch to performances because like sometimes I, know. It I just want to Showcase is so much better. <laughs> I oh think I'm gosh. starting to see that too since we did our virtual showcase and we're getting ready for another one. <laughs> like less dress. What is that? Phoebe's <laughs> on mute because there's some like bullshit happening outside. I heard. <laughs> <laughs> is it still going on? Oh, it's trash day. Phoebe says it's trash day. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> So next week is recycling. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> What's going on? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so yes, y'all. Showcases could be so much more fun than competitions. Although competitions are fun, showcases do allow less stress. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yes. Big time. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I'm glad you brought that up too, because a lot of times, you know, like you'll try a competition and and decide it's mm -hmm. not for you. <laughs> like, yeah, I tried yeah. it once. I'm done. Yeah, I did it. I did, it. I, I, I did the thing, <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. Well, tell, tell us a little bit. About... Oh, oh, sorry. No, you could say. <laughs> um. I will tell you though, uh, performing while people are throwing money at you is also just like. <laughs> So much better. That's what I was <laughs> so if I could get some of that money back, I wouldn't mind. Um, it's really funny because I feel like um, one of my studio owners in Philadelphia, she competed once um, for a competition where like winner took all, and it was $10,000. Only one person gets money and it was the number one person, $10,000. And I feel like now whenever like my students start getting upset, about not being able to nail something or like are nervous about performing in a student showcase or even PSO for that matter. I'm like, are you competing for $10,000? No, then it's fine. If you're competing for $10,000, you better clean that shit up. <laughs> but you're not. <laughs> this, is not, this is not a big deal. There, there's not $10,000 on the line because then we're going to work. <laughs> but so it's, it's how I help even for myself to keep it in perspective and for my students, like it's, this is a hobby, this is fun, like it's okay. Unless it's not a hobby and it's actually your job, <laughs> then good luck. Excellent. <laughs> do you do um, uh, on the, anything else on the side besides teaching or is it just like full-time teaching? Um, I help manage the pool and dance studios out in California. So um, pretty much my whole life right now revolves around pole, whether it's teaching or just training for myself um, or, or helping to run the pole studios. Um, and in that capacity, I'm in charge of um, um, like onboarding, hiring, um, training new instructors, which is probably like my favorite part of my job. Um, helping create development opportunities for our instructors to keep getting better and be more technically qualified uh, or technically proficient. Um, 
I manage the schedule, um, really just always trying to stay ahead of what our students need, what they want, um, to make sure that they have a bunch of options regardless of which studio they go to. Um, so it's, um, it's a really cool work opportunity because um, I feel like I am, I come from like a corporate business operations background uh, and I feel like I'm bringing those skills to a pole studio context, which um, is like really, really cool. Um, Cause I feel pole is right now in this like gray space of going from this thing in the shadows uh, to being uh, an Olympic sport. Thank you, JLo uh, and Pink. Um, <laughs> Um, and it's cool to see, that, you know, just how the industry is starting to become like more mainstream in that way and bringing what I'll say like traditional business expertise to, <clears throat> to running a fitness facility just like any other. Um, but yeah, my, my whole life revolves around pole except for like dog walking here and there. So those are the two. I have like two dogs that I love to walk because I can't have my own dog. So there's that. Uh, but yeah, my my whole everything is pole dancing in my life right now, which is um, kind of unbelievable. I never imagined this would be possible. So it's like my life is currently a dream right now. So it's really cool. I love that. <laughs> I feel like that's like a, a thing too. Like the a uh, few um, people that we talked to, it's like I, they were like, "Oh, I feel like I'm living a dream. Like this is a dream world." Yeah. <laughs> so weird. It's like, so weird. Like, people are like, "Oh, are you ever gonna start your own studio?" I'm like, "Most certainly not," because I can see how hard that is. <laughs> I'm good. Um, and uh, yeah, it just feels like I've been lucky enough and have also worked hard enough to put myself now in a position where. Um, yeah, I can just, I can do this. This is wild. This is freaking yeah. wild. <laughs> and you're so traveling awesome. now, which is like always yes. awesome. Can't wait mm -hmm. to start traveling like you. <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, like you're taking a few months off just to like, yeah, like <laughs> tell us about your, your work on myself, off. you know, I'm going to work on the other side. This is the summer of the other side because ask me to do my superhero on the other side. I'm like actually terrified. Uh, I'm fine. I can, I can, I can whip it out, but I, I'm a little bit like, oh, that's what they feel <laughs> when they're doing this for the first time and they're mortified. Um, but no, yeah, I just, um, you know, kind of like I said at the beginning of the call, I feel like, um, you know, I early in the, in the last couple of years, I've just been like, I'm trying to nail trick after trick after trick. And I feel like now I'm just starting to settle um, within what I've got. Um, and like now I really do just want to start evening out the imbalances and I kind of want to clean up what I've got. So, you know, there isn't like any move that like I'm trying really hard to get this summer while I'm taking a break from teaching. Um, but just want to, you know, clean up, keep it, keep it even, uh, for, forget which side is my sassy side or not. Um, so yeah. Yes, and I, I appreciate you, you know, like saying that too. And like, and also like, it is good for us polars to take that time and like balance ourselves out. And then, um, in, and like while I was thinking about this, the whole imposter syndrome of like, cause, and like having you in my class, <laughs> like, and, but then we, you know, we, we understand we can always learn things from other people. And like, even though like I was, you know, quite intimidated to have you in my class because you're so amazing. Like I still managed to teach you something. So <laughs> Yeah. So I think like that has a um, you know, we need to to state something like that. Because <laughs> I feel like all polars have imposter syndrome for some reason. Like what is wrong with us? We Um my uh, my current boss tells me that all the time. I remember the first time she asked me to lead a teacher training for new instructors. I was like are you sure? Are you sure? Uh, she's just like, if you feel like, be quiet, go do the thing. <laughs> um, and then I like, finished it and I was like, wait, like I am, I can do this. Um, but yeah, I think like as a, as a mover yourself, you know, if you keep moving the same way, 
uh, like you just, you're not going to be as flexible in like being able to like rewire your body to do something slightly different. So like, if you always get into the thing, the same exact way, like it's just, you're really just like narrowing your skill set and your ability to like try to explore a different pathway to get there. Um, but yeah, with, with the imposter syndrome, like as an instructor, like I feel, I sometimes like to tell my students, you know, like, or, or newer teachers that I feel like I am just an amalgamation of all of the things that I've heard that I have found helpful. Um, some of my stuff is like super original, like the scratch and sniff. Um, but really, you know, like I'm also taking your class to be like, oh, like that's a completely different cue that I've never thought about for helping somebody get into a thing. Um, so I'm also just trying to steal your stuff as I do um, to make me a better instructor and to, you know, just try to find different ways to be able to communicate with different people uh, in a way that makes sense for them. So, you know, it's, it's never good if you start thinking that you're done or like you're as good as you're going to get. So. For sure. I, I definitely appreciate that. And like, that's why it's good to like take from a bunch of different teachers too. Cause like everyone's got a different movement um, background, I guess, like, yeah. like things that they do that are not unique um, to other or it would be unique if you tried that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you just never know. I mean, like, I, what was it? Like, genie to inside leg hang? I was like, what? <laughs> what? Yes. I, for, I didn't know. I didn't know. Um, which, again, for me is, like, so awesome because I want you to be able to get to your inside leg hang without having to invert. So, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's empowering for sure. I to make a memory. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my gosh and I like I especially appreciate like uh, what you're doing like to go to different studios and take from different studios and learn and like you said you'll just grow from it um and I think mm -hmm. that's a good um exa example for other teachers to like take some time off and like maybe try to balance yourself and like experience others other studios um Sarah mm -hmm. Sarah B from Bees Knees was doing that too <laughs> yeah. I, I mean have to do that. I have to drive back to California. Um, I we took three and a half days to get here, so like we we were like barely peeing uh, <laughs> way here. Um, but I, I would love to like take a longer trip and like go to a bunch of studios uh, on the way. Um, but yeah, back when I was like, like corporate and stuff, um, I I committed to every year I would go to an international pole camp. Um, and which like was basically like my way of like choosing which country to vacation in. And it's like, okay, like where, where are the camps? <laughs> That's where I'm going to go. Um, cause I don't like doing like overly touristy things, but, um, but also just like being able to fly to another country and like also meet like-minded people. And then like also training pole in Europe is like a completely different, like thing. Like they do shoulder mounts, like in lower level classes. And I'm like, I'm not ready for that, but like, I can see why you think that it's okay <laughs> to do this way. Uh, you know, it's so just like seeing even like a different pedagogy around teaching and like how they think of levels. Um, uh, and, you know, just like trying to have an instructor like teach me <laughs> and when I don't speak the language, it's like also a cool experience. Um, but yeah, I used to travel every year to an international pole camp um, and I've made some of my best friends um in these pole camps and like people that I'm still friends with on Facebook <laughs> we're like having kids now and like I've just like been following like we've been friends for like five years and like I've gone back just to visit them um so yeah I just um I'm excited that pole camps are coming back now that we're kind of moving out of the pandemic because uh, they're so much fun uh, and such a great way to like pick a place to go to and then like you have like built-in friends almost so but. no that's a great idea I never even considered that probably oh it before. Yeah. <laughs> go with a friend go by <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> You get there. I've looked into them. Some of them get expensive. Mm -hmm. So that's been my like deter for it. Yeah. So maybe they have payment plans. 
Yeah, a lot of them. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I actually started a website uh, to aggregate all this information. We're not going to go into that right now because the website is like still being built. Um, but some of them uh, take payment plans. Um, uh, a lot of them like take Venmo and like PayPal and stuff. And um, and like if you come with another person, you get like a discounted rate. And a lot of them have referral bonuses and like early bird specials. So if you do your research and like cobble it all together, you can kind of knock a couple dollars off of some of them. But yeah, sometimes with these international camps, like even just like getting there is like, <laughs> like yeah. so. Um, yeah, there are like so many different types of camps and like lengths. Like some of them are like weekends only, so that like, you can like, like I think like in Germany there's one um, where like they have weekend programs and then you can hang out for the rest of the week. And then some are like super all inclusive, where like literally once you're here, like all your meals are given to you and like you don't have to worry about a thing. That's but, what I want. Yeah, like, there are lots of options. Pogos, pogos for sure. <laughs> Yes. Well, time um, when I was living in New Jersey um, and I was still going to body and full, I was like in one of their like internal Facebook groups and like somebody posted like, I'm coming for a traincation. Does anybody, can anybody recommend a hotel? And I was like, you can sleep on my couch, but it's in New Jersey. So you'll have to like, um, and she actually came and slept on my couch and I'm like, hi, I'm Fifi. Welcome to my Hello. home. Let me know what you need. <laughs> Uh, this is how you get <laughs> yeah, well, like I don't know, like that might be a thing. Um, it is like, couchsurfing.com. <laughs> yeah. If you can find somebody with a pole, that would be like amazing. Oh my god. I feel like that's the vibe of, of like New York though, because like the last time I was there, like I met a whole bunch of polars and they were like, Oh my god, if you ever wanted to come back, come stay on our couch. Like and you can stay for a whole <laughs> week and like take classes. That yes. might be like, the vibe of it. Let's do it, Wendy. I need to get a traincation for body and pole. Let's go. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I would do it. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think like it's just like a built-in. It's just it's like you're part of like this humongous like fraternity sorority. Yeah. I don't know what the non-gendered term for an already <laughs> is. Um, but like you're just like we're like built-in friends, and it's like okay, like for whatever reason, I trust you. <laughs> yes, because you're a pole dancer. <laughs> Which like I don't know what that means, <laughs> um, but yeah, we have the the pain of the smashing of the body into the pole in common. I'm like, I'm like you protect my house because like <laughs> you can like hurt somebody if needed. I don't know. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, um, she ended up being a really good friend of mine, and I went back to to Europe to hang out with her and I slept on her couch. <laughs> it was great. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Reciprocated the couch. Yeah. My awesome. turn. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Do you, um, let me see, uh, a question. What is your favorite pole move? What is your favorite, favorite pole trick? Caramel swirl. Um, which was taught to me by Delijah from Black Girls Pole. Um, and she said, nobody calls it caramel swirl, only her. But ever since then, I've started ca calling it caramel swirl. But it's double helix um, because, um, like I said before, Delijah, like, is one of, like, that's when I was really feeling bad about my inverts and stuff. Um, and I have a bendy back, and you don't need an invert to caramel swirl. And I just feel like that was, like, the first move I ever felt pretty in um, and made me feel like, okay, this is my jam um and like maybe you want to keep doing the thing um and also caramel swirl what a beautiful name because uh, you said it looked like ice cream coming out of a machine and i'm like you're right it does <laughs> so yeah double helix or caramel swirl it's my the first move i felt good in <laughs> i might have to check what double helix is it sounds very familiar but i'm not gonna lie i'm drawing a blank <laughs> It's like you just your arm underneath your leg and then back bend. Let me see if I can find it. I can show you. You'll see exactly what I mean in one hot second. You'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, please hold. I love photo shoots. It's like my favorite thing to do. 
Oh my god, I was going to talk about the photo shoot experience with you and how amazing you were. I barely did anything, but I appreciate you were the most helpful. Oh, thank you, thank you, but I didn't do much. You were great. You know, you had like a fanny pack. You had all the stuff ready to go. Like you were like right there behind me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. never. I don't think I've seen her try that one. I'm gonna have to give them. Well, try that you should too. come to my bendy tricks class. And I'll get you into it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm definitely thinking. It, no, I'm not thinking. It, I want to. I'm just waiting on money. <laughs> okay. All right. well, I was like, no. like Because um, I like teaching bendy tricks. And I feel like I always have to tell people, like, no, you don't have to be naturally bendy. It's okay. Like, we're just going to warm up to get you as bendy as you can get. And then. Oh, no. I'm pretty bendy. I really want to take it. I just. Um, it's money. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go <laughs> so yeah it's definitely on the list because of course yeah. <laughs> right i'm excited <laughs> so yeah what was your question about the the photo shoots and stuff oh no i was just gonna to say like um because you mentioned that you had a, a wedding planner background and that helped with you. Oh, no 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 like in my soul i do it in my soul oh, okay <laughs> that movie with j-lo okay um, yes. um, okay, this was me in a previous life. <laughs> I, I, just I was like, like, wow, you've done so many things. No, no, no. <laughs> no. no I just I feel know. like I gravitate. Jack of all trades. No, or Jack no. How do you I'm say it? Like, like the best Disney mom in the world. <laughs> I'm going to have that fanny pack with like, what do you need, kid? What do you need? You need a band aid? You need some juice? What do you need? <laughs> you need That's a cheese exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you were so perfect like seriously like those pictures came out so beautiful mostly because you were just there hyping me up too like I felt like a superstar so I appreciate you, you. thank I you really so much I didn't do much I, but thank you <laughs> you're welcome whatever, <laughs> whatever. Oh my yeah I, I think it's because of like America's Next Top Model I used to watch that show a lot as a little kid uh, I can't believe it's like still running or something <laughs> like I'm just in love with like just creating these beautiful images um yeah I love photo shoots they're awesome yes <laughs> oh my gosh and you sent us so many beautiful beautiful photos um to, <laughs> to choose from for this this uh interview and for also our studio use so you, you've done so many photo shoots. <laughs> no, they're, um, because like, I guess I don't compete. Mm. I don't know. I feel like this is like one of the things that I love about like my pole dancing hobby is just doing yeah. photo shoots and like mm. getting really big thematic with them. And just right, like there was doing... one like in the desert, like with a background. I've, I've done one. Oh my God. Let me just. <laughs> We might have to do like a montage of all Phoebe's amazing. You stuff. have no idea. Let me find some I was shit. Like, wow, Even look at her in this one. They, they keep getting crazier and crazier. I just don't. So, know. do you take a pole there or do you use um, for some of them like a black screen? Uh, I've never used a black screen. Um, Okay, no, let me let me let me impress y'all a little bit. Oh my god. Okay, and then I give them all like a <laughs> name or like a theme. Um, so this, I, I don't even, I don't remember what the name of this one was. This was with Yvonne Nguyen in LA. It's not pole dancing, oh. but I was just like this crown and like this red sheet and water being thrown at me. And water. Yeah. That's gorgeous. And I'm just oh like, God. what is this drama? What is this drama? I don't even understand this like weird crown. Uh, <laughs> wait. What am I doing with this? Oh, I call this one um, like the Spanish queen. Look, I don't even do Lyra, but I was like, let me get on that shit. Oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> You're like, I don't even do Lyra, but I don't do this, this, but we're gonna, but we're gonna um, <laughs> see what other random photos. Um, I call this um, bad Easter bunny. <laughs> This was with Millie Robson. Oh and the my U gosh, that's amazing. Uh, so yeah, I post this one for Easter all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, bunny. 
And then, um, oh, this is, um, do you know the book Lolita? Uh, yeah. About like 12 year old, okay. Uh, I call this one Lolita Grew Up. No. <laughs> Not okay. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> And uh, yeah, this was, um, and I call this one like my desperate housewife photo. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, you the that way. Oh my oh God, look at the dog. It's so cute. Your dog is modeling too. <laughs> my dog. Wait, so you don't have any modeling background or a photography background no. or anything? America's next top model. <laughs> Build a portfolio. That's all you need. Yeah, like really, and I'm known after I'm, ten seasons. You have the. You've seen more photos than I've posted online. I don't post these. Oh. <laughs> it's really weird. Uh, this one's a little bit weird. I'm sorry if I offend anybody, but I call it Satan's Bride. Um, <laughs> so it's like super oh, that's dark. Beautiful though. Thank you. Wow. Uh, it just looks. Oh my like God! We should like. Dark. Yeah, these are uh, amazing. Thank you, Fifi. Uh, yeah, what can't you do? <laughs> do a, uh, so many okay. Here's a big one. Um, <laughs> there's just a whole ass story behind these wings, but oh my goodness. Um, this is with Simon oh Cooley gosh. from the Image Cella. That's amazing. Those wings are from the Czech Republic. <laughs> um, How hard was it to like maneuver with those? Quite hard. Because I had small little <laughs> ones and they sucked. No, they, were like, they were like a yard and a half long. It was oh wild. Trying to those. That's beautiful. Is, um, a Parisian girl. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many photos. Oh my god, I could do this forever. Oh wait, hold on, I got some more. Uh, I did a glow in the dark shoot. <laughs> I got oh, my wow. hair. That's amazing. It was great. Why don't you post any of these? What's wrong with you? I literally, I literally just stare at these when I'm like taking a shit. That's literally all I do. With these. <laughs> like this is me. Don't you think other people would want to do that too, though? Like, no. But I just remember, like, there was this one time I was at Body and Pole. I was waiting for, like, my little L2 class or something. And, like, there must have been, like, an L4 coming out. And I just remember being, like, look at those Amazons. They look so strong and amazing. And I feel like now I look at, like, my photos and stuff, and it's just, like, is that me? Am I like, what? Is that really me? Like, do I look like one of those Amazons from like 2010? Because <laughs> that's what I feel like. Um, okay, this will be the last one I show you, but I <laughs> classic mermaid yeah, photo. With the mermaid fin. How the heck did you even do that? Oh my God. Okay. That podcast, broke my nice. spirit. I that almost broke my spirit that that photo shoot. Um, I a friend of mine had to like invert me. <laughs> well, how do you invert with your legs together in a mermaid fit? Well, uh, you have to be ridiculously strong to deadlift in a pike. <laughs> Turns out, but like my friend literally like picked me up, turned me over, and then like ran off for the photo. And then <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Anyways, Perfect. I love. It's, they just make me feel like you know like body dysmorphia stuff you know you just uh, like never feeling enough sometimes but I feel like photos just make me feel like it's like it's in my face it's like no like this is this is this is you and so just like being so like sometimes I just feel like I, I stare at my photos and like my videos and be like like going through the process of like this is this is you this like stop beating yourself up over xyz um and just like not really believing that like i'm at this level that i am now it's like it still kind of shocks me sometimes um and it's a it's a humbling feeling but yeah i just i like photo shoots to like kind of just document my progress you know i'm glad that you you said that yeah because it's 
it's good for especially like beginners to think like you know they maybe they can't do any moves but you can do some beautiful things for the photo shoot and then you look at their pictures and you're like wow that's me like i can't even believe that's me yes <laughs> yes <laughs> so, yeah. yeah i love photo shoots <laughs> i also like that you talk about it as another like avenue for pole dancers because like you know, we talk a lot on, on Pole on the Call about, like, competitions and, you know, performing and stuff like that. But we don't really talk about photo shoots. But that's definitely mm -hmm. another artistic avenue that you could take as yeah. a pole dancer. Yeah. And yeah, especially if you share them. Yeah. <laughs> yes, people love that. <laughs> Literally known for not doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I hope the photographer isn't offended or something. But, like, I never posted <laughs> some of these. <laughs> oh my gosh you're not alone though I fi find some other pollers just like keep all their stuff to themselves and that's perfectly fine yeah I, I have no <laughs> like, really, us. <laughs> I think I'm just like satiated like looking at it myself and I'm like I'm good <laughs> I'm good <laughs> I don't need that's likes. what it's for yeah <laughs> excellent <laughs> yeah well, uh, Chris, did you want to ask her about the master trainer process? Am I on mute? Yeah, I can ask her. Um, so I, I think if I read correctly on your biography that you're a master trainer, how, um, how does one become a master trainer after they get the one, two, and three, and four? Yeah, so I'm a master trainer for the pole and dance teacher training program. So out in California, um, which is the company or the network of studios that I work for. Um, and for that, this is like a new program that they're starting up as far as just uh, trying to develop teacher training programs and have uh, and kind of take it around the country to help train uh, newer instructors as an alternative to like expo or um, uh, elevated training. Uh, basically for that, I was, uh, oh, here's my imposter syndrome. I was asked to be a trainer because they thought I was good enough to train other people to be a trainer. Um, so I received like, you know, just like some some offline training to really just make sure I understood um, the training manual and the concepts that they really wanted me to make sure that I imparted on a new batch of instructors. It was like 14 people in the first uh, training that I led. Um, so yeah, I think for that is just, uh, I happened to be at the right place at the right time and had good enough skills to be chosen to train the babies, <laughs> um, which was really flattering. <laughs> that is awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. So is, it, is the program like available for um, everyone? Like how does it work then? Um, or is it just for the your the studios that are in your area? Yeah, and you're welcome to take the training. So if you want to fly out to California um, and uh, and do the thing, we have active flexibility trainings. Um, I believe we also have some silks and or lira trainings, but we run those less frequently. Um, but anybody is welcome to fly on over either to Portland, uh, where we just opened up our newest studio. Um, or in California to, to attend um, one of the trick space training. Uh, we also have a heels choreography training um, and again, the active flexibility stuff. But yeah, anybody's welcome to, to attend them if it works with their schedule, but it's, it's a two day intensive. Um, it's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome though. How many studios are there? There are currently four studios. There's one in San Francisco, one in Oakland, in Berkeley, and our newest one is up in Portland, um, which I think is like stripper capital of the world or something. I think there's like more strippers per capita than anywhere else in the country. So yeah. that's pretty freaking <laughs> awesome. Um, we love strippers. We love, yeah. we love pulling of any type, any anatomy, any whatever. Um, unicorns, we'll take them too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, our newest studio up in Portland. Nice, that's awesome. And you, you, so you co co own the whole like. I don't co own it. I co run it. Um, oh, you co run it. 
yeah, just working on expansion, keeping our instructors happy, uh, keeping them growing and learning at all times, um, making sure our students have all the options, um, just really keeping our ear to the ground. And, you know, like, what does the community need? Um, how do we grow community? Um, how do we, you know, make sure that even though things are really expensive out in California, that we still create access to the studio and, you know, um, invite people to take advantage of all of our discount scholarship programs and things like that. So um, pretty much whatever we need to to keep people happy, everybody happy and coming back for more is what I do. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, Chris, do you have any, any questions to... Um, I think we went over, what do you do outside of Poe? Do you have any other like I know you like photography and the photo shoots. Any other fun hobbies? <laughs> um, oh my god, I only did it once, but I'm like low key addicted. Um, curling, I love curling, <laughs> like the ice thing and the sleeping. What is curling? Exactly. <laughs> Mandy knows what curling is, I guess, because you also think this is ridiculous. It looks like. That's so I random. Don't know what it like, is. How did you like? It was somebody like, "Hey, let's try it." Like, look, you do know what it is, Chris. <laughs> I'm into alternative sports of all time. <laughs> oh my god! Look how Whatever makes stuff. us happy. Chris, wait till you see how ridiculous. In the Olympics, the Winter Olympics. <laughs> that is so right, like, cool. So that's in the Olympics, but pole is not in the Olympics. <laughs> not yet, but it will be. Don't get me started. That um, does look fun. Curling. Okay, let me let you know. That shit is a workout. Oh, I believe it. I can, yeah, I can I imagine. Yeah. Well, so I was totally judging Nick Judgerson, and I'm like, <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta like run after that ice ball. I forget what it's called. And like sweep. And like it, it just like it brings it's like you go for a sprint and it's insane. Um <laughs> But uh, I was. Uh, <laughs> that was really <laughs> intense. <laughs> it is. Like, it just like stresses me out for like a hot second. Um, <laughs> but um, you have to do like a little bit of a lunge thing mm -hmm. when you let the the ice ball go. <laughs> and, uh, oh, so it's when like when I went, as you do, because how long before a pole dancer does it? <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> so crazy. I, was just about, yeah. I was just about to say, I would not be able to do the launch. I would like skate my way into a split accident. Right? Like I would just fall <laughs> right into it. Yeah, around. I was like getting really low and I was like, I got this. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> Well, I only tried it once, but like we've been meaning to go back, but that was like a really fun time. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, d I, uh, I don't have hobbies now because my hobby has become work, which is really cool. Um, yeah, no, I just I like to come home and watch Star Wars and Lord of the Rings and uh, throw back a Mike's hard <laughs> after a long day of teaching. So we're some hobbies. <laughs> That's about it. I like to hang out with yeah. puppies. <laughs> oh yeah, and like for self care, do you, what do you do for self care? We just had our episode on self care. <laughs> um, I put on mascara. Yeah. Mascara makes everything better. Um, no, sometimes I just like I melt into the couch for like a day, and it's just like I need to rest. Um, I, I dog walk and I walk my favorite dog. This is not my dog. But <laughs> I keep a photo of him, but I am. Um, he's my self-care. He's the sweetest thing. His name is Pierogi. I love so him. Damn cute. He's insanely cute. Okay. Um, but yeah, Pierogi is my self-care. Uh, I'll treat myself to some boba. I love boba and tacos. Boba and tacos. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, also like taking flexibility classes. I think that's part of my self care. That's kind of weird. I haven't uh, thought about that, but um, it just, it's something that like I do for myself kind of thing. Um, 
and even though I'm like in like somewhat intense like back bending things like I never think so hard about breathing um and that's like <sighs> like it's 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 almost like a yoga except it's like way more intense um but yeah I need to get better about self-care that's true those are some pretty good hobbies. I heard Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Mike's hard. Yeah. Vegetating. Vegetating. Yeah. Sounds perfect. One day we'll have to add Mary Jane up just one session. Well, uh, I actually, like four days ago, started taking um, some CBD tincture to like help me yeah. sleep and do some pain relief um mm -hmm. low-key addicted because oh my god all my problems have gone away <laughs> and it's yes, only been yes. like four days um without their oh head high too it's pretty cool yeah um it really it's, helps everything like mm -hmm. it's yeah. a little bit <laughs> unbelievable but like i just i i've been in massachusetts now for two weeks and i feel like i don't know like sitting in the car for like 14 hours a day just mess with my body which That's is like unbelievable yeah, yeah. to me because I pole dance and I'm like I do way more <laughs> in my day-to-day yeah, -day. I was like sitting down negatively impacting me so much and like for the last like week and a half I've just been feeling like like I'm falling apart um <sighs> and I'm not sleeping well as well so like not being able to sleep is like not helping me heal but yeah I just uh, I've been sleeping like a baby and nothing hurts anymore which is like awesome I'm gonna go train. <laughs> so, of course, right? Right, like I feel good, let's go. Let's go beat it up. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I, I've i been injured way too much in my pole journey that like I've gotten a lot better about actually taking what my body has to say into consideration. Um, Cause if I wanna keep pole dancing till I'm old, I can't be. I can't be living like, like I'm 20s in my 20s. <laughs> like I'm gonna get this move no matter what. Like no, all right, go sit down. <laughs> Come, back to Come back tomorrow. <laughs> oh my gosh! But I'll tell you, like, um, or you said about flexibility. You said that you get given up on your middle splits, and like, I don't have. <laughs> my needle scale and I want it and I've made a goal needle scale by 50 and Let's I have it. nine I have nine years but I think I can do it in nine years <laughs> so I think, yeah, so you should I get think you can. should be middle split by 40 right needle scale is the split up when you're standing backwards yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Basically yeah. Legal. yeah. um I'm fine without my middle it's cool it's cool I'm gonna ask that like when I be buried in my casket that they just like break me and like put me in a middle split in the casket. That'll be the only middle split of my life. The end. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> For eternity. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That's okay. I'm gonna, uh, I've, I've decided to fully embrace positive psychology. I'm going to acknowledge my weaknesses but I'm going to focus on what brings me joy and what I'm good at. Um, so I'm just going to keep backbending and splitting and maybe doing both at the same time. <laughs> I feel that. Oh, but, um, do you have any plans for the future in poll or, or anything in the works that you want to talk about, talk about with everyone? Or? Yes. I want to get pregnant. <laughs> I want to have so many fucking kids. Um, I've actually been joking that like, this is my, uh, training, I'm training for a baby this summer is actually the subtitle of the summer. Um, uh, I'm not going to lie moment of vulnerability. I'm really nervous about getting pregnant. Um, and I'm afraid of, um, everything that I've had to work so hard for, especially in my core <laughs> to invert. Uh, that um, that I'm gonna lose that, and uh, yeah, I'm just I'm really nervous about like I don't want I don't think I'm like feeling like I need to make sure my bounce back is fast because that just feels shallow. Um, 
but I'm, I'm nervous about like losing all my core strength because it's like when you lose your superhero and then like you're trying to learn it again you're like most certainly not <laughs> like I know how much this hurts now um and I f- I'm just afraid of um yeah I'm just afraid of managing those feelings of like wanting to be back where I was before I grew a person in my body um so yeah I just uh I want to kind of increase my training because like my theory is that like the um, the more conditioned your body is to like high levels of fitness then like the longer you can push it into the pregnancy which means that you will lose less of your strength so um yeah, uh, my next pole goal is to have a baby and not quit pole dancing. <laughs> I think that's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh God, I'm so stressed. <laughs> I love that. That isn't there, isn't there a new um, pregnant polling while pregnant like education program certification? I don't know if it's a full certification. I feel like I've been seeing a, a lot of big names getting pregnant and shit, and I'm gonna just yeah. like stop. Like, <laughs> hey, do you remember me? Hey, yeah. how's that life? I um, love it. I feel like I read somewhere there's some kind of education or some, I don't know if it's a certification, but they'll teach you how yeah. to kind of maneuver pole dancing so you don't lose it and yeah. you can still kind of pole while pregnant. Yeah, I need to I need to look into that. Um, or if not, you can create it. <laughs> wow, I think I'm like, a diary. <laughs> Of like the pregnancy, like diary, baby pregnancy slash pole training journal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like that would be really helpful because I mean, you know, I mean, on Instagram, there's you know, you followed like like Bendy Kate, like she was pregnant and like upside she down, like the day off. <laughs> right? Like she really did. She was doing some shit with like a baby in the way. I'm like, you need to clear that child around the pole right now. How are you even doing that? I can imagine. I'm just gonna like <laughs> this child is gonna hit the pole like so much while I'm pregnant. It's like, oh, I forgot that was there. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh-huh. Even like Marina, um, my uh, my uh, I can't even say it right now. The um, woman I opened the the pole studio up with, but she had a, a baby recently, and she was pulling all through her pregnancy. Um, yeah. You know, everyone's different, of course. Like. Uh, things could happen but I think you know as long as you feel good you'll you should be able to still do the thing you love yeah (laughs) Yeah. I remember there was like this one sex in the city scene where when Charlotte finally got pregnant uh, oh yeah for years and like she was an avid runner and like she stopped running because like she had an at-risk pregnancy and like her doctor was like no you can't keep running just like you know Mm. And I was like, okay, okay, I can pull dance. <laughs> yeah. Charlotte can run. I can pull dance, <laughs> which is like not at all the same, but okay. Um, but yeah, I'm just like, I'm curious to see like if I can backbend or like how long I'll be able to backbend uh, and stuff like that. And then just like refamiliarizing myself with a new body. Uh, and then it's just. Right, because yeah. you do have a new body after. It's, like, all new. <laughs> yeah. Like, this parasite, what did you do to me? <laughs> you don't want my food? My feet are swollen. <laughs> like, can't pole dance anymore. I'm going to love my kids so much. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, that's my oh new, God. my next whole goal is to have all the kids. And I love food. it. <laughs> yes. Totally doable. You got totally. it. But, yeah, I've been so many people getting pregnant lately, um, like stars and like all the also just like pole dancers that I know, and um, yeah. it just kind of gives me hope that you know, becoming a mother doesn't <laughs> make me less of anything. You know. Yeah. So. <laughs> you luck when I get pregnant. <laughs> You got this. You're too funny. You got this. <laughs> These kids pressing me out already. <laughs> I love them. I love them. I love them. <laughs> but they're stressing me out. There's just a twinkle in your eye right now, and you're like, ah! <laughs> Don't uh, take pole from me. Don't take it. 
seriously it's kind of how it feels mm. right now but it'll be fine it'll be fine you know your your, your kids are, will love pole and then they'll just like make you pole dance even more anyway so like I hope so. it's an endless cycle I <laughs> you're just making so. more pole dancers <laughs> I'm going to be a pole great, great, great grandmother. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Well, well, fortunately, my partner is like super supportive. And like I've already told him, like, you're going to take the kids as often as I need to go dance. Like, I'm out. Perfect. I need to go, so <laughs> um, we'll see. That's necessary. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Do you have any advice for um, new pollers that are just starting out? Um, ooh, new pollers. If you're like, if it's your first lesson, I'm like, take five classes. Just take five classes. You can't, you can't decide after just one. Um, and just be kind to yourself. Like you're on your own journey. Like, don't compare yourself to the people next to you, because you can't move like anybody else but yourself and um yeah just be safe don't kick up into things you'll rip your shoulder apart <laughs> but yeah to take at least five classes before you decide and then be kind to yourself love it yeah i think that's true like you should take at least a few classes and maybe with different teachers too just to yes yeah yeah Oh, we lost Chris. But I lost my video. Yay. So I'm on my phone now. I'm back. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I don't know what the fuck yeah, okay. <laughs> Well, Chris, I was saying I, um, I asked all the questions that I had for Fifi. So um, I asked about the master certification. We asked about her pole trick, um, the inspiration she has. Sorry, that all must be up. Um, what like training advice or what is like your training style that you recommend to people that um, helped with like becoming so bendy and help? Uh, I mean, especially if you're in there since you yeah. said that to you so long. What kind of training style do you use? I hope that went through. Yeah, um, when I'm working with my students, I always ask them to do an extra anything on their sassy side. Um, Cause I realized um, kind of recently that the thing that you would rather not do um, or the thing that you don't enjoy doing is because you're probably not good at it uh, or you're not strong in it. Um, and so making sure that you hit up your sassy side a little bit more and like understand like, oh, like I don't actually want to do this. It's probably because you don't feel pretty in it or you don't feel graceful in it or you don't feel strong in it, which is like a really good indicator that maybe you should work on that. Um, as an instructor, I feel like uh, it's really important to me to really focus on technique, um, obviously to keep people safe. I like to, and I stole this from somebody uh, as, I, as I have in my pole journey, but I had an instructor once tell me that momentum is not a muscle that you can work, uh, to which I've added momentum is here for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> It'll help you get into the thing, but you're not really kind of earning it. And you're also really compromising, um, potentially just injuring something because if you're swinging or using momentum, then if you're not actively engaging to protect yourself, then the chances, then you're just uh, putting a lot of weight on something that wasn't necessarily ready to take on that weight. So that's why it's important, for example, to engage your shoulder before you try to lift yourself upside down, because if you don't, then an unengaged, quote unquote, lazy shoulder is then going to bear all of your body weight. And it's going to be like, I wasn't ready for that. So I'm going to decide to rip a little. Um, so I'm very, very big. I'm a stickler for technique. Um, but I think the, in addition to like doing things slowly and again, quote unquote, properly, um, it all is also because I think technique sometimes makes up for the hard things or like um, the difficult strength moves. So like if you can, for example, in your apprentice, really think about pulling yourself sideways into the pole and then leaning back 
it becomes less about you having to lift your legs, uh, which is a lot of uh, strenuous work for your hip flexors. And it's also going to be a lot of core work. So I think um, focusing on technique so that it doesn't all become about strength uh, is really important to me. Um, and yeah, just having a good time. Like I'm, I'm the tough instructor, um, which is, I think, also why it's really important for me to like create a really fun <laughs> kind of joking environment because um, I really just want to set people up to be able to do the sport safely and to like not get as injured as I did because I never really listened to my body and I was like, God damn it, I'm going to get this move come hell or high water. Um, and that's how I've just injured myself. Um, and then just like finding the space to breathe. Um, one thing that I do because I feel like so much of like the stuff that I work on is like meant for Instagram and I do everything on spin. So one of my personal goals is that <clears throat> I like to be, I like to challenge myself to hold a spin for three rotations um, or if not three rotations uh, to make sure everybody sees every angle because you know, um, but just to be able to make sure that like I'm able to get into something and it's coming from a place of strength and not from a place of like panic, because I recognize like, for example, when I was working on um, my inversion to chopper to outside leg hang, I basically never would chopper. I would just invert and go straight to my outside leg hang. And it's like, okay, I keep skipping over the chopper because I have negative emotions tied <laughs> to being able to chopper. Uh, slash nobody cares about my chopper. I don't want my chopper. Nobody cares. I'm just trying to get to my outside leg hang. And I realized like, no, my chopper is a move. I will invert. I will do it slowly. I'm not going to fly through it. I'm going to develop the strength so that I feel more confident when I'm doing this. And I'm going to slow down because the thing that I am trying to rush through is the thing that I'm not good at and I'm not good at it. I don't want to do it because I'm not good at it. I'm not pretty in it, blah, 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 blah. So trying to find just like moving a little bit slower, being in control, uh, if not three rotations on spin pull, holding something for three breaths, uh, even if they're shallow breaths, um, to again, really make sure that you're accessing and exiting a move from a place of like strength and confidence and not like, <laughs> I'm up there and I'm down and I might have jammed the toe when I when I came out of the thing. Um, and then my biggest pet peeve as an instructor is when people say sorry all the time. Um, I literally, you know, again, overgeneralization, but like women have a tendency to say sorry when they mean excuse me, for example. Like if a woman bumps into you on the street, they're going to be like, sorry. And really they mean to say excuse me. Um, and so it's really important to me when I have students in my space, whether they're women or not, um, to actively say, stop saying sorry. Like, do not apologize because you're trying something new and you're not getting it. Like, people will literally, like, bail out and be like, oh, so sorry. Like, <laughs> why are you apologizing to me? Because you're trying your Jasmine for the first time and like you had to come out of it while I was spotting you. Um, and I, I like to threaten my students. I'm like, if you say sorry again, you're gonna give me 10 push-ups. I've never actually enforced the rule. Um, but I, I do wanna call to people's attention, like you are apologizing too much and also you're apologizing for something that you, you shouldn't be. Um, I tell my students, you know, the only time you should apologize that I expect an apology and like a dinner is if like, I'm spotting you in your chopper or butterfly and like you fart in my face. I expect a lot. I expect a lot of you <laughs> if you fart in my face. That is the only time I expect you to apologize. And even then I get it. Sometimes the air just comes out. <laughs> but please stop apologizing. Don't apologize for anything when you're taking, an, taking a poll class unless you fart in your teacher's face because that's not cool unless we have face masks on in which case okay maybe <laughs> again I was like a lot of teaching things but um yeah right like at least like a warning first be like ah yeah. 
<laughs> Move over, Fifi. <laughs> like, nope, I gotta hold you up. I'm spotting you. <laughs> Let's come down. <laughs> Go to the corner. Do your thing. <laughs> oh my God. Chris, thank you for asking that question. That was a really good, a good question. That was a fun um, question. Yeah. <laughs> Can you still um, hear me? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I love that you said that. Um, I love how that you brought up about the stop saying sorry because you're right. They always do say sorry. <laughs> and everyone apologizes for like taking up space too. And I think that's just like our our society. Like, and we get into the poll studio and we're allowed to do all those things. And we're like, is this okay? But like, it's totally okay. Take up all the space. Like, kick the curtains. Like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Your body part fell out. Yeah. It is it happens. Yeah. Don't need to be yeah. Like, totally even like funny. when people hit me when I'm spotting them, I'm like, don't apologize. This is part of the job. Number one. Number two, I should have spotted you better to not be <laughs> underneath your foot. So like don't apologize for hitting me. Like this is literally my fault for putting myself in the way, but also part of my job to get hit in the face all the time. <laughs> don't apologize so that's so funny too like and over time like we know where like your legs are gonna go so we like dodge them out like it's yeah. sometimes you know we miss it but like it's so funny that it's part of our job to get hit yeah. with the legs occupational <laughs> hazard <laughs> like, don't even worry like it my head was in your way yeah it's, it's like that joke of like you know it's like somebody punches it's like oh why'd your face meet my hand it's like okay like I put I, I put my face next to your foot this is my fault yes. don't apologize <laughs> it's hard to to stop apologizing though like it's really yeah. hard yeah I think yeah. I've gotten better because I used to be a sorrier um, me too a lot more often yeah yeah and I feel like this is like one of like my personal woman things of like trying to change the world and I just bring it into a pole space but like I, I always go out of my way to tell women, like, why did you apologize? And like, they don't even realize they're doing it. And it's like, don't be apologetic. It's, say, excuse me, or don't say anything at all. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, Chris, do you have any more questions or? Um. I think that's it for now. I can always ask more questions soon if we hopefully take class together, maybe be Yes, I'm taking your class on Friday. I'm all about this Latin flow. But I did see that. Yeah, I was excited. I taught people how to cha-cha once around a pole. I was like, let's go. Let's not do anything too complicated for y'all. It's too funny. I don't know. <laughs> so fun. Yeah, then um, I can't wait to take your, your Bendy Tricks class, too. And also, um, <laughs> I so appreciate you helping me with my Bird of Paradise. And, like, we were talking about the breathing. I remember it had that, you know, that you were like, breathe, breathe. And we were like, we breathe together. And as we breathe together, like, my shoulder found its place. And I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. So I really appreciate, you know, like you said, even just the small amount that you taught me. Um, so far, you're an amazing teacher, an amazing performer, dancer. <laughs> so if you don't know who Fifi Bamboo is, go check her out on Instagram <laughs> everywhere. Um, and she's, she's here for the summer um, in our area in the Northeast. Um, and so, you know, she's here for now and until she has her babies. Yes, babies. <laughs> Pull babies. <laughs> But thank you so much for taking the time out and, and sharing your story with us. My absolute pleasure. I hope somebody out there found something helpful today. First, oh, yeah, for uh, sure. <laughs> thank you. What was that? What was that, Chris? If y'all want to visit Fifi Bamboo and her bendy tricks, come visit us in Springfield. Yes. It is July 30th at noon. Yeah. <laughs> High noon. High noon. <laughs> High noon. <laughs> we will duel with the poll. <laughs> oh my God, I'm such a nerd. Okay. 
<laughs> too funny. <laughs> oh my god, I can't wait. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> learn all of the analogies oh my god okay if you want to write them down I wouldn't be mad at you I'll yes <laughs> we'll start your book your <laughs> yeah. your bathroom reading <laughs> it'll have a picture and a picture of you and an analogy <laughs> but like some version of like sniffing like an animation <laughs> be like want to know how I got into this mood Scratch and scratch. <laughs> I'm telling you, it. It people always go the wrong way. No, no, I'm, I'm never going to forget that, Ian. Never going to forget. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, we we have a little sign off that we do, and now I, um, Chris is not present to do the sign off. Oh, good, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there might be a It'll be choppy, but we'll stick it. See, um, we have heels on it, and we sign off with our heels. So, should I get one? Wait, do I need to do any? You want to go run off and get your heels? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Phoebe's back. (laughs) Let's go. Yeah. (laughs) So so fast. I got you. I'm like Superman. (laughs) yes all right well thank you so much everyone for for listening and watching to our episode today with the amazing fifi bamboo (laughs) and we are a poll on the call my name is mandy mack (laughs) and i am chris rivers we are fifi (laughs) we're all signing off (laughs) i love it so (laughs) much